Excel is all about manipulating data, sorting it, summing it, filtering it, searching it, charting it. Data is at the heart of Excel, but Excel has no data of its own. All of the data in your Excel spreadsheets comes from somewhere else. You must either type it, copy paste it, or import it from XML, websites, or databases. This post focuses on getting data from databases. Excel comes with several tools that facilitate getting data from databases. One such tool is Microsoft Query. Microsoft Query makes exploring, linking, filtering, and importing data from databases easy. To demonstrate just how easy, I'm going to perform a moderately complex data extract from Microsoft's Access Demo Database, Northwind. You don't need Microsoft Access to try this demo on your own PC. And as you will see, you don't need to know anything about Microsoft Access either. If you'd like to try this demo yourself, you can get the Northwind Demo Database from Microsoft.com's Download Center as a part of a bundled demo. You can also Google Northwind Access Download for other locations or see the text associated with this video for a download link from my Dropbox. Once you have the database, the next step is to launch Excel. From the Data tab, find the Get External Data Ribbon group and click From Other Sources. Select from Microsoft Query. Next, we need to choose our data source driver. Since our data is stored in a Microsoft Access database, we need to select its driver. This driver is included with your Windows operating system. With the appropriate driver, we need to find the Northwind file. Earlier versions of Northwind end in .mdb. This version ends with .accdb. Now, we need to select which table in our database we want. For this demo, I'm going to get orders for the purpose of analyzing customer purchases and employee sales. So I'm searching for a table that looks like it contains order information. And here it is. Double-clicking on a table adds it to our query. Now we can see what fields or columns this table contains. We can tell by bold lettering that the order's ID uniquely identifies each record. We'll double-click it to add this field. Now because I see a field Customer ID, I'm going to guess this is the key to a Customer Master Table. Let's see if we have one. And sure enough, there is. So let's add this table in order to add customer information to our query. Microsoft Query has determined that the Customer ID in the Orders Table is the foreign key to our Customers Table. We know this because of the line between the two tables. Let's add the company's name to our query so we can readily understand who placed each order. Employee ID appears to be another foreign key, and in this case, I'm hoping it's the employee who processed the order. Let's add the employee's name to our query. Once again, Microsoft Query has figured out that employee ID in orders is the key to the employee master. From the employee master, we can add the employee's name. Let's continue adding order information such as when the order was placed, how much freight was, and where it was shipped to. So far, so good, but I also want to know what was ordered. The product information is not in this file. I suspect this is an order header file and that the product information is probably in the order detail file. Let's see if we can find it. And there it is. We'll add it too. Again, Microsoft Query has identified how these files relate to each other. We call these relationships joins. This time we see two bold type faced fields. Since this is a detail file, it needs an additional key field to identify each record in the order. In this case, Microsoft chose the product ID for the second key. Not what I would have done, but for a demo this will work. Once again, we're going to look for a master file that contains product information. From this table, we can get the product name. Now returning to the order detail table, we can add quantity and price. As a database beginner, Microsoft Query really helps us visualize the data. But for more advanced applications, we will want to use SQL. You don't need to know SQL to use Microsoft Query. But as you select tables and fields, Microsoft Query has been quietly creating an SQL select statement for you. You can use Microsoft Query to explore databases and help build SQL statements. And for the more advanced, you can copy this SQL statement into VBA code to parameterize it or subselect it or what have you. Just keep in mind, this is a moderately complex SQL statement, but with Microsoft Query, all we did was point and click. Easy. With our query built, we can return the results to our spreadsheet, where we can slice, dice, sum, and chart to our heart's content.